Hello, I'm Pierre Campbell, and thank you for visiting PierreCamp.com and watching the Leadership Network. Today, we have a very, very good opportunity to get a chance to speak to some great entrepreneurs that are doing great things in the community. I, Mr. Ira Perry and his lovely wife, Kelly. Ira is the author of God's Businessman. What an intriguing title here. I, I, what I want to do is talk to you about your book, God's Businessman. What? What? made you even think about using this this title how powerful is that God's businessman talk to me well you know it's very simple Pierre there are millions of people who have a heart for doing what's right and they have jobs and they work day in and day out and they come to the end of themselves and they realize that man you know there's more to me than what I can physically see and they have aspirations for business and they have dreams of doing what's really in their heart to do but they lack the insight and the information that will perpetuate them into doing what they're called to do full time and we believe that we put God's business man on the map to give people a road map to give them some insight to give them the tools that they need in order to take their God-given idea or their natural talents and cultivate it and, and to to create a business system that will enable them to live from the inside out or to live from where they're talented. Okay, all right. So when you're talking about living from the inside out, what do you mean? And, and if you don't mind, I'm going to ask your wife, Kelly, when he thought about making God's business, man, what were your thoughts about the book? What were your thoughts? Of, what inspired him? Probably what inspired him is we spent countless hours and time speaking with people, sitting down. People had business ideas and they would want to come and sit down and tell me how to do this and what do I do. And then after a while, it's like you're spending all this time and you have to build your own business. Okay. So it's like, what can we do that would uh, allow us our time and then help other people also? Because we're all about helping other people to build the, the dreams and desires that God has on the inside of them. And so uh, we decided to do this book. And, uh, and it did. It is definitely, it's like a prerequisite when people come to you and they have an idea. We're like, okay, read this book. Okay. And if they're really serious about uh, manifesting that idea or doing that business, they'll read the book and then they'll come back and go, okay, I got it. Or I did A, B, C, and D. And, you know, now what? How do I go? Or I'm so excited. Right. You know, so the book definitely is to help other people. Yeah, we use that as a qualifier because, you know, the people who aren't serious and we're, we're confronted with that all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I want to. I want you to help me with my business. Okay, go read this. And a week later, if you haven't read it, then that tells us very simply if you're serious or not. Because if you are serious, then it's a two-hour read. It's a terrific conversation with me, without me having to sit in the chair like and tell that. you all that. It's a two, maybe two and a half hour conversation. But the people who are serious, they'll get it. All right. And that doesn't waste your time. When people are coming and you're spending hours sitting down with them, if they don't read a book, then we haven't lost our time. And, you know, clearly they're still in the same spot. They're not ready to move. Right, right. And I like the fact that you said it's a two-hour read because if you look at the size of the book, I mean, we like small books, don't we? <laughs> I love small books because it's an easy-to-read type of book. And if you look at the, the font, it, it, and there's some pictures in there as well, yeah. some graphs, I, I, I really think that this is... It's going to help. I did read something in the book. It talks about, you talked about your, some many entrepreneurs start businesses, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't experience the joy right. well, the thing of is, being an entrepreneur. The thing that, that we found is there is a concept of what we call receiving the end of your faith. And you hear a lot of, a lot of people um, say things like, well, I'm, I'm believing for this or I'm trusting for this. And they never come to a point of conclusion. Okay. And because they never come to a point of conclusion, they don't get to enter into the joy okay. that that conclusion would bring them. And what we talk about is you being diligent and you being having all of the, the necessary character in place in order for you to see this thing to full fruition. And then once you do that, now all of a sudden it's not a labor, it's not a chore, it's a joy. And okay. if you do what you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. I love that. Sure. If you do what you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, we, we found that, you know, if you give a man a fish, obviously, he's going to eat for that day. Okay. But if you teach that same man how to fish, 
he can eat for the rest of his life and he can feed his family. And that's what we're working to do. We're working to equip people with the tools that will enable them to not have to be dependent upon a system or dependent upon a person right. or dependent upon relatives to take care of them. But now what we're doing is we're empowering the general populace to now take what their natural talents are, what their natural giftings are, and now they can live off of those things and create a business system that will allow them to be profitable and, and enjoy it all the way through the process. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's really challenging to see so many people in our society right now struggle financially. You know, they say, well, we're in a recession, we're in a, we're in a, uh, the economy is, is riddled with holes right now. But if you look at the, 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 the amount of luxury items that are being purchased, mm -hmm. they haven't decreased. <laughs> They've increased. That's if right. you look at the number of luxury magazines, mm -hmm. the DuPont <laughs> Registry, for instance, they're, it, they're, they're, they have increased. They have not decreased. So that tells you that there's something happening. There's a, there's a, a gap growing between the haves and the have-nots. And what's going to happen eventually is there's going to be a, such a, a, a frustration that it's going to be potentially dangerous. So what we want to do is we want to help people become the haves. Okay. And it's very simple. There are things that you can do. Um, we've talked to countless people who you know understand they they've got desires to own bakeries. They want to. They they have skills at being. I mean, we know people who are barbers and they're never going to never going to barber school. Right. <laughs> They, they, you know, people who can do hair and they've never been to cosmetology school. You know, how is that possible? How is that possible? Well, you know, there's a natural gifting. Okay. And God has given all of us skills, talents, and abilities. And what happens is if you never take the time to cultivate that right. and recognize that, man, this is something that I can do, that I can use to take care of my family. Mm -hmm. You know, very simply, when, when Jesus had to pay his taxes, Mm -hmm. He didn't send Peter to go and program a Pascal. He didn't send Peter to go and, you know, jump on a, a space shuttle. No. You know what he sent him to do? He sent him to go fish. That's right. Why? Because fishing. Peter was a fisherman. <laughs> that's right. And that's how he's going to uh, help you pay your taxes. That's right. That's how I'm going to pay my taxes, to do the things that I'm naturally gifted at. That's the right. Thing, I mean, I'm not a very uh, brilliant rocket mathematician. Right. Say. But I know what I know, and I'm good at what I know. And no one can beat you being you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're so, absolutely right. You know, that's a, you know, one of the impo most important things to me, just recognizing your natural skill, mm -hmm. your natural bend, as we say, and then wrapping a business system around that thing and educating yourself. This is, this is one of the other things that we found. And we see, we see people who have natural talents. Right. Let's say you're a really good cosmetologist or you're a really good you know, hairstylist. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not just enough to, to have a natural gift. Mm -hmm. There has to be some work, some sort of exertion to make you a subject matter expert. That's to right. perfect your craft. And a lot of times, you know, there's a, a professional football player, uh, Jamarcus Russell, yeah. um, who was very talented. And when he left that LSU football team and he went to the next level, he was no longer able to just live off his talent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what you see is you see a lot of people who are naturally talented at cooking. Well, that doesn't eliminate the requirement for you to now be accountable to perfect that. Now you must document your recipe. Right. Now you must take record of, of all of the things that you can cook. Now it's, it's not just something that you should do. Now it's, it's imperative that you now begin to document all the things that you do. Why? Because you have to be able to do it and it has to be able to be done without you being there. And the only way that can happen is for you to document your process. Right, and, that, and that's a great uh, wealth principle there. Yeah. And it gives you an opportunity as an entrepreneur to grow mm -hmm. as well because you're documenting, you're making checklists and, and things of that nature. Kelly, let's talk about some of the principles when we read this book. What are some of the principles that we'll get from reading this book? Well, one that I love <laughs> when I think about the book and think about Ira is uh, he always talks about, you know, you build this business system and it's working for you. And a lot of people get comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's cool. It's working for you. You're making money. You're excited. But then there's another step. You have to go up 
you have to have vision to see where you're going to go. It's just not enough to be right there okay. at this point. Where are you going from that point okay. to the next point? And so I always think about him when everything is going good. He's always climbing this ladder to look up and say, okay, where are we going now? What are we going to do now? What's the next step instead of going? Because a lot of times we become comfortable and even though we may be comfortable, we have to look at there are other people out there that we want to help. It's not just being selfish and say, right. oh, we made it, so we're good now. Let's sit back and relax. But we want to help other people get there. So the only way for us to help other people is for us to keep going, moving forward, That's looking right. up to see which where to go now, what where to uh, invest, where That's to right. what next company or what next <laughs> idea. So always moving forward and not just getting to a point where you're stagnant and uh, just saying, complacent. yeah, complacent, where, oh, this is good, you know, we're making good money, and, mm -hmm. you know, life is okay, but there are other things, and as we build companies, and as we build businesses, we help other people, because we'll bring other people in. That's right. So, always looking to see where we're going. We're always moving forward, and not standing still. I think, I think that, you know, right now, there is such a, there is such a cry in the hearts of people to, to be great. And you, you, you see people across the country and they're sitting in their chairs or they're sitting in their pews and they know that there's greatness on the inside. Oh, yes. They can, I, mean, <laughs> I they know can, what you mean. They can almost taste it. Or do you say great or maybe fulfilling a purpose? Right. Well, that's how I look at it. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, you say great, but I look at it from this right. side. Well, how, yeah. going, you want to right. live a purposeful life. What was I put? That's the question right. that people want to know. Why am I here? What was I created for? Right. So and when we say great, we don't mean yet. famous or right. celebrity. Greatness is summed up in this. I did what I was born to do. That's right. And, and, and when a man can, can go to his funeral knowing that he did what he was yeah. sent here to do, he was great. That's right. Whether the cameras recognize him or not. Right. And in business, what we're finding is there's there there are there are people who don't understand very simply, when you first start out, okay. you're gonna have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're gonna have to do <laughs> you know and, and we've encountered people who said things to us like, Well, you know, I wanna do this, but you know, I don't wanna do the heavy lifting. Well you know, it, 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 it's not going to work. Right. You can't have the water without the wet. <laughs> right. You know, and, and, you know, in the beginning, you know, I remember when we first started, it was, you know, very simple for me because I had this thought process in my mind where, you know, I had an understanding of what role I was fulfilling when I was doing it. Right. Every successful organization has three distinct personalities. Mm -hmm. You've got the visionary, mm -hmm. the actionary, mm -hmm. and the missionary. And the visionary is that 10,000 foot view and he's the person that's always excited and he's talking about all the wonderful things that you know, they're gonna have as a result of this business uh, thriving and growing and, and you know, he really talks in generalities and, and sees the, the end from the beginning. Right. And the visionary then has to have an actionary. Right. And the actionary is that personality <laughs> that, that takes that vision That's right. and translates it into functional, accomplishable goals. That's right. This is the step. Okay, this is the vision. Okay, this is how we're going to get there. This is our roadmap. This is our this is our map quest, if you will. And then that actionary then communicates that vision mm -hmm. through a strategic plan to the missionary. Right. And the missionary is the the guy on the ground who's actually executing the plan. Who's actually doing the heavy lifting, making making all the things happen. Okay. Well, in the beginning of every organization, you're going to be all three of those personalities. Yeah. You're going to be all three. Right. And if you don't recognize that you don't you have to do all three, then you won't succeed. And this is the catch to that to that scenario. If you put a visionary with a missionary, they don't speak the same language. No. So the so the result is frustration. Okay. Because the missionary says, well, you keep, you know, giving me these grandiose plans of pomp and circumstance. I'm not Tell me what to do. Right. Tell me what to do. <laughs> Tell me what to do. <laughs> How are we going to get there? How are we going to get, get there? Yeah. And there's frustration. Right. Well, if you put the visionary with the actionary, all they do is think tank on it. <laughs> all they do is talk, 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 talk. Mm -hmm. And nothing ever gets done. So, that, again, the result is frustration. If you put an actionary with the missionary, you get productivity, but it will be short-lived. Because okay. all you're doing is giving me a bunch of lists and a bunch of rules and regulations. But what's the end game? What's the, what's the vision? Exactly. What's the right. point? Right. And right. we all know that where there's no vision, that people perish. That's right. So in order for you to have success 
And lasting success, okay. you have to have each one of those distinct personalities functioning and they have to understand where their lines of demarcation are and where they start and where they stop and, and when to do what. Otherwise, also, you're going to be frustrated. Knowing that in the beginning when you start a company, like you said, you're all three of them. But then there comes a time and you have to recognize when that time comes that it's time to get those different parts working with other people. Okay. Because if right. not, then the company is not going to grow like you want it to grow. Right. And there has to be that time where you, you divvy it off and you give it off. Mm -hmm. Now i got to have some you know, missionaries to do this part in order for it to grow. And that's very difficult for many entrepreneurs to yeah. do because what you're essentially doing is handing off right. your baby. Right. Yeah. And right. now you've got to, to this five-letter word, trust right. somebody right. else. And you're... You know, you're you're very apprehensive, and we went through that. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, our company is thriving. We, you know, we operate a multi-million dollar operation right now, and you know, we're doing that because we've learned how to trust right. the people that we hire with the things that we've instructed them. But to it do. is difficult. It's, it's but like having a baby. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's a baby, and right. you have this baby, and now you got to go back to work and leave it with this babysitter. You know, that that's a hard thing, and. And I did. I found it very difficult, probably more than him, to hand off, you know, okay, we're going to give this to an accountant. Well, I don't know him. Right. I don't know if he's going to steal our money, you right. know, or whatever. And so you do have to develop that trust. And, and really, even if the trust is not at a level, you still have to let it go. And yeah, you'll make some mistakes, but along the way, you'll learn from those mistakes and the mistakes will come less and less. Yeah. And you know what's funny that you say that? You know, I do, I do a, little, a talk and uh, I talk about trust and how do you get trust? Mm -hmm. You have to give trust to get trust. Absolutely. So, and that, and that's what you're talking about yeah. there. I love the the personality traits that you talked about. You talked about the <clears throat> what was it? A visionary. <clears throat> excuse me. A visionary, the actionary, and the missionary. Yes. You know, one of my leaders, my past leaders, she has a passion statement. Have you ever heard of a passion statement? Mm -hmm. Not no. A passion statement. And what a passion statement essentially is, it, it's a statement similar to a vision statement mm -hmm. or a, a mission statement. And the passion statement has your beliefs and values on there. She keeps her passion statement inside of her book that she walks around her planner. She walks wow. around with every day. I thought that was so impressive when I heard about that. And I, I couldn't help but to think of you. And, and I wanted to ask you if you could articulate, I know you don't know anything about the passion statement, but if you could articulate in a few words, I know it would take more time, but in a few words right now, what your passion statement would be, what would that be? Um, I think our passion statement will be very simply live from the inside out and do your best and if you do your best living from the inside out i don't think you can fail and i think when you say living from the inside out um we used to have this thing we said way back when he would always say babe when the inside catch up with the, the outside, outside. No. when the out when the inside catch don't up fight with the outside. <laughs> outside catch, catch up, up with the inside there you go <laughs> then wow, what what you know what a difference is going to be because really the way I think on the inside of him is so much, and then when you look out here you go wow well, man right. doesn't sound like what you're saying, but as you continue to move forward you begin to see those things more and more and really as you begin to see them you begin to make impacts in other people's lives why because. They know it can happen. Man, it happened for yes. them. They were just average Joes. And, and now, man, it, it did it work for you. It can work for you, too. Right. And so just being able to see it work for other people, to me, is like my passion. It's like, man, it happened for us. And we're not the smartest people on the yeah, earth. Right. You know, well, we know what we did. Well, why don't you do the same thing? And to see it happen in somebody else's life bring so much satisfaction, so Absolutely. much joy, you know, to see it working for somebody else, to see the success and the the ideas that you've seen somebody just, you know, just kind of go through with, to see yeah. it come to pass, it's like, oh, this is so awesome. Let's talk about entrepreneurship. Y'all are leaders. And this is the first time where we're having a couple, I, I want to call y'all like a powerful duo, dynamic duo <laughs> on the leadership series. And I, I want to talk about your thoughts on leadership 
as a couple and as entrepreneurs. You came together, you put together those three personalities, the visionary, actionary, you see I'm getting it, right? I'm gonna take notes from watching this video. <laughs> the visionary, the actionary, the missionary, you put those three things together. As a couple, a married couple, what are your thoughts on the characteristics that you need to be an entrepreneur? Um, I think the most important thing that you need as an entrepreneur, I mean, there are so many that we right. can go, but um, if I had to, to rank them, I would say you have to be a person who is humble. Humble, okay. Because, and I say that because <laughs> humility will allow you to learn yes. from anyone. Mm -hmm. And there are so many things that you don't know as an entrepreneur. You don't know what you don't know. And as a result of that, you're forced to continually be in a position of learning. You must re re con constantly maintain a posture of learning. Yeah. And if you're not humble, you won't learn what you need to learn. I mean, you, you may need to learn something from, a, from your teenage daughter or from, you know, one of your employees or, you know, something like that. And if your if your arrogance precludes you from from learning, right, then you're in a you're in the dark in a particular area, which could come back and hurt you. Right. So I would say, you know, the first thing that I would say is you have to be, you have to have humility in order to learn what you got next. I don't think like having a, what is it a, like a tenacity, not quitting. Oh, okay. You know stick because to yeah, stick to itness. Um, because so many opportunities come forward to quit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think about, ooh, when we first started, we had plenty of opportunities to quit and just say, you know what, let's just get a regular job, forget all this business stuff. But you have to be able to, to keep going, to right. know that, man, I believe in what I'm doing and keep going. And the best part to me in being a couple with it is one day he might want to quit. Right. And I'm like, no, babe, we can do this. We can do this. <laughs> and then one day I might want to quit. And he's like, no, babe, like, we can do this. We can, we can do, do this. this. <laughs> you know? We just decided not to quit on the same thing. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> we're fine. I like that. And so it works out because we're in one another's corner. Or if it comes to, you know, pushing him. Sometimes there were times in business where, you know, he was a little shy on the trigger. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. And I can understand because, you know, he has a wife, he has a family, and he wants to make sure we're taken care of. And then I could see him kind of going like, you know, should I move forward? And I'm like, man, it's your dream. It's your passion. Go. I'm going to make this work. You do it. Go for it. Go for it. And so I think if you just never quit, if you just keep moving forward, and I think the thing that you hear a lot in business, people get no, no, no. Well, uh, yes, it's coming. Right. You just got to keep going. And the no's are just helping you to really perfect, you know, your your talent, your gift, your presentation, your business idea. All those no's is doing is helping you. And if you allow the no's to help you, you'll get to the point to where you, you hear nothing but yes, even when they're saying no. So when they say yes, you already knew it. That's right. I'm at my best at this point because I've been through so many. And then as you remain humble, even in situations where people may know more than you, we have times where people uh, would tell us stuff that we already knew. Simple stuff like, you know, do you know how to go to Google? You know, <laughs> when we're like, we're in IT. But to remain humble and allow them to feel like they know more than us, right. work for us. Oh because God. now we're humble and then people are like, oh, I like this. Right. Okay, when I see someone, I'm going to toss it towards you. And so you use those two, being humble and never quitting. I think, man, that's a... That's a I, would, I would say, you know, in line with being humble, as a leader, right? you forfeit the luxury to be rude to anyone. Mm -hmm. I like that's that principle. And yeah. that's necessary because leadership is simply influence. And in its simplest form, it's influence. Right. And... You never want to do anything that would violate your ability to influence someone. Right. And being rude and insensitive will certainly limit your ability to influence yes, someone. Yes, it will. Down the road. <laughs> yes, it will. So, you know, I think that, you know, every leader, you know, regardless of what level, you know, you you were sent to, you know, needs to recognize that, man, you know, you know, as a leader, I don't, I, I can't be rude to people. Right. I mean, I, we have gotten... We've had so much progress by just being nice yeah. to people. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd be amazed. And it's so, it, it almost sounds, you know, elementary, but, you know, just being nice. Right. Even when people are rude to yeah. you. That's right. Just being nice. Yeah. And yeah. being uh, pleasant and cooperative with people. You know, it, 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 it goes so far. It does. And right. a lot of times, you know, you can get, you know, what we call in your feelings. 
And, you know, someone does you wrong and you just want to reciprocate and you want to get them back. And I always tell my staff, I'm like, no, you can't do that because they're wrong. But if you do, if you reciprocate and you respond in that same manner, now they're going to move and get another job. But your reputation will follow you forever. That's right. So, you know, I think that as a leader, you know, you have to recognize that, okay, I have to take the high road. It's not optional. I have That's right. to take the high road. That's right. I, I must <laughs> take the high road. Right. And it's not just, I'm not just doing you a favor by doing it. You know, I'm, you know, doing the right thing. And, you know, when you do that, it's important that you do it in the right way. You know, meaning um, if someone does something to you, well, I'm only reason being, I'm being, I'm just being nice to you right, right. because I have, I'm, because I have to. Right. You know, or even if you're helping someone, you know, you you know what I, it's, it's what I call an illicit exchange. You know, someone comes to you for help, and you help them, but you take their dignity. Right. You know, I call that the illicit exchange because if you're going to help someone, do it the right way. That's right. Because mm-hmm. if I come to you and I say I need a hundred thousand dollars. And you give me $100,000. Mm-hmm. Well, here's $100,000. I'll take $100,000. You not gave me $100,000, right. but you took my dignity from me. That's right. And that's something that, you know, is going to come back and harm you later down the road because you cannot get away from this one principle. A man will always reap what he sows. That's right. You know, I think, that's about, right. Um, that's right. I think about when you say um, being nice and, and doing things just for doing it. I think about the one time where you had the opportunity, this guy sold his company for um, thou- millions, millions of dollars, and he's moving out of his office. And, and nobody was helping him. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody was helping him. He's packing up. And so he goes in, he's like, hey, you want me to help you? And the guy's like, sure. And to this day, because he didn't have to go in there and help him pack, but because he did, this guy's been very... Very help- helpful. Helpful. <laughs> he mentored me. As, I mean, he became wow. my mentor as a result yeah. of that. I mean, everyone in the office was angry with him, except me. And I said, well, I'll help you move your I'll help you move out of your office. I mean, you just sold your company for $33 million. That's right. I'll help you. That's right. And, you know, That's as a result right. of that, you know, that opened the door. That's right. You know, but again, that goes back to humility. Right. Because right. a lot of people, you know, I own my own business. I'm not going to grab no box and, yeah. you know, walk into the car. Mm-hmm. I'm an entrepreneur just like he is. Mm-hmm. You know, and what happens is you end up locking yourself out of that door. And it's yeah. funny that you say that. You talk about being nice. In the islands, there's a saying. It's nice to be nice. Yes. It's nice to be nice. nice to be nice. So think about the rewards that you reap from being nice. Right. Yeah. Without the intention of getting what getting something right. from the person. Right. Right. That's leadership. Well, leaders are people who are emulating. I mean, someone is watching you. Someone is watching right. me, whether you know it or not. Right. And when you're nice. What you're telling someone else is, it's okay to be nice. So not only are you helping the person that you're dealing with, but the person who's watching you is now also emulating that, and they're helping someone. So you got four people being impacted. You, the person that you're helping, the person that's watching you, and the person that's benefiting from the person that's watching you. So, you know, it's, it's a beautiful cycle that goes on when you're nice to someone. And I can't tell you the thrill of helping people. Yeah. When you have a heart to help. Unbelievable. Yeah. There is there is no amount of money, there is no paycheck that can that can equate to the, the thrill and the joy of preventing misfortune in someone's life. I have a question. Okay. Say you're down and out and you know, you've been hurt by countless people, you're an entrepreneur <laughs> and people have just turned you down. No, 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 no. Rejection after rejection and you just like Nothing is going right for me. How would you encourage that person right now? Like, how would you encourage them to keep going? Well, I, first of all, I'd like to say that I am incredibly qualified to answer that question. (laughs) Okay. And (laughs) um, uh, I want to switch from talking to you to talking to them. Good. Um, For those of you who have gone through the the, the, the rejection, you know, you've stepped out there and you wanted to, to do this thing and you believe that this is exactly what you were supposed to be doing. You stepped out there and there was no one to help you. The first thing I want to tell you is be encouraged. You are on your way to succeeding in life. If you will guard your mouth and protect what you say, you can continue to move forward. Because if you will protect what you say and say the right things, then you will hear the right things. 
And when you hear the right things, faith will arise in your heart. And when faith arises in your heart, you can believe. And all things are possible to him who believes. That's right. So if you will protect your mouth, you are on your way. And what I mean when I say protect your mouth, don't say, I don't have what I need. Don't say, oh, I'm broke. I'll never be able to do this. I'll never. Don't say those words because you'll hear those words. And when you hear those words, faith in your heart cannot arise so that you can believe all things and then all of a sudden all things are possible to you. So if you will say the right things, then you will hear the right things. And when you hear the right things, you will believe the right things. And when you believe the right things, all things are possible to him who believes. And that's what you have to believe if you're down and out, if you're shortage, if you're experiencing the shortages of life, if you're experiencing lack, then that's how you get your way. That's how you get yourself out of that predicament. Well, I've got this idea for this business, but I don't have the money. What do I do? Yeah. Very simply, watch your mouth. That's right. Say the right things so that you'll hear the right things. And when you hear the right things, Faith will rise in your heart for what you believe. Wow. And all things are possible to him who believes. Believe. You know, it's funny that you say that. And I'm going to exercise exactly what you just said. <laughs> I received that from my spirit right now. I'm getting boiling up. I received what you just said. I'm sitting here saying, man, wait till I watch this video over again. You know, you talk about lack in the book. And that's so, that's, and you are qualified. And I appreciate you, you know, sharing that, sharing that word there with us. Now, what I'd also like to talk about is the leadership conference coming up in South Carolina with oh, your sister, yeah. Mrs. Terrace Riley. Yes, talk to me about that. I'm excited. Oh, I'm going to be there. It's, it's, and talk to me about the whole Shark Tank experience oh, that they're bringing there in South Carolina. Let's oh, do it. Let's it's it's, it's going to be, I mean, you're going to be turbocharged. You're going to be super charged. Breaking out and busting, busting loose. loose. <laughs> what, we're, what we're doing is we're granting people access okay. to purpose. Mm -hmm. We're granting people access to vision. And what we mean by that is now all of a sudden you're going to come to this place and you're going to sit out in this chair. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull the curtains back and we're going to show you that there are people sitting right next to you who are just like you. Mm -hmm. wow. There are people who have greatness. And when we say greatness, we just mean purpose-filled people. Mm -hmm. There are people with purpose on the inside of them, just like it is in you. And what you're going to recognize is, man, you know, I'm not an anomaly. Mm -hmm. It's not just me. And then what we're going to do is we're going to help you identify that you're not an anomaly. And then we're going to show you how to take what's on the inside okay. and how to cultivate it and create a quality product that people in the commercial marketplace will now want to purchase. Wow. wow. And now, not just that, now we're going to teach you how to create it so that it repeats itself. Over and, and over and over again. We yeah. want to educate because a lot of people have ideas, and most people come into business doing what they do. I mm -hmm. wash windows. You know, that's the only thing I do. But there are so many other facets of business. You know, right. marketing, and you know, how do I get my product? How do I pay In my people? It, yeah, right. <laughs> how do I get paid? And so you want to educate people because, again, when you start a business, why don't you talk about that for a second? The part yeah. of how you did. And you talked about how they don't want to do that dirty stuff. They don't want to do the dirty stuff. Oh, right. So most people do. They go into business. I wash windows. That's all I want to do. I love washing windows. You know, that's <laughs> my thing. But marketing, I don't want to do marketing. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to pay people. I don't know about that. So then people withdraw from that. And what happens is a business will fail. And they say, what, two, what, two years? Yeah. Um, small businesses fail before they reach two years because they're only focused on their part. When you are in a business, you have to become, you don't have to know everything, right. but you have to become educated in those other areas so you have knowledge of it until you're able to pay somebody. And right. that's the kind of stuff we're going to do a Shark Tank. We're going to give you insight into the realities of business. Yes. Because, you know, the, the large companies, they don't share this kind of information. Mm -hmm. They won't come to you and say, hey, listen, this is what you're going to need to do to succeed. No. They don't want you to do that because they want you working for them. Right. You know, 100 years ago, <laughs> 1912, 90% of Americans work for themselves, yes. and 10% of Americans work for someone else. Okay. Fast forward 100 years, 2012, and now you have 90% of Americans working for someone else, 
and 10% of Americans working for themselves. Mm -hmm. So what has to happen is there has to be, again, this transfer of knowledge, mm -hmm. this mindset that has to change to where now, you know what? I do have something to offer this economy. Right. right. I do have something that can help create jobs. Right. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to succeed in America by going to a cubicle okay. with your own little phone, mm -hmm. you know, with your little timesheet clocking in. No, you, you're going to succeed. The American dream will be realized when you take what you're naturally talented at mm -hmm. and do it and do it well, master it, and then mm -hmm create a business system around it, and all of a sudden, it's something that other people can gravitate to, and now they can take care of their families off of it. So that's the two right. parts, um, because then the other part is we have other people, investors, mm -hmm. that are coming in, and they are ready to put forth their money and their energy to help people that have ideas or businesses. That, that makes believe, sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, that's we're not clean, right? That is the, right that here. Is the operative Steve word. On the <laughs> it has to make sense because if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Right. And right. that's important because, you know, we're, we're sitting there, you know, we're one of the investors and we're, we're looking, you know, for ideas, you know, for us to invest in that, you know, we could say, oh, you know what? That just needs a little bit of resource behind it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it can be profitable. Right. right. But, you know, don't come in with some some underwater basket weaving, you know, needle making <laughs> business that you think could possibly make some business. You gotta make come some with, money your, with your A game. Right, you better bring your you A game. You gotta come with your A game, <laughs> present your ideas, speaking well, got yourself together, ready to present. You know, not something you just put together yesterday. Right. Something that you really spent some time with. You're in front of people that can make changes, make things happen right then. So right. a wonderful opportunity for people to come that are looking. I don't think it should be the only place because right. just because you don't have finances don't stop the business. Right. You know, but this is a wonderful opportunity for people that have these ideas, these businesses, inventions to come with their A game and present in front of the investors and, and hopefully be one of the ones chosen right. uh, for people to invest in and we'll see you, you know, on the TV. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? The third component to that, 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 that I encourage, and I encourage everyone that's interested in the Shark Tank experience in South Carolina. It's on January 21st down in uh, South Columbia, South Carolina Absolutely. with Terrace Raleigh busting loose, breaking out and busting loose. The other thing that, that I really enjoy at when you get in that type of environment with leaders and entrepreneurs is the networking that can be yes. done. The networking is priceless. Yes. Um, I always say, you know, relationships will always be a bridge right. to take you to some place that you couldn't ordinarily go. True. And, you know, for most entrepreneurs, you know, they create their, their product or their service in a bubble. Mm -hmm. And they think that, well, you know, I'm protecting this thing, so, you know, I can't, you know, announce to the world that I'm doing, because I'm, I'm fearful that someone's going to steal my idea. Well, first of all, you know, <laughs> if, if you're good at it, right. you know, no one's going to be able to steal it from you. Right. Um, second of all, creating it thing, and you, it's okay to create it in a bubble. You just can't live in the bubble. Yeah. That's true. And what has to happen is relationships now allow you to take that idea out of the bubble, mm -hmm and trust. announce it to the world mm -hmm. and be able to trust absolutely yeah mm -hmm. once you're, you're able to once right. you're able to do that and 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 see that you know hey people aren't out to get me they're right. you know and, and they may be right but again so what this is business that's right you know if you that's want right. to stay in school go back to school <laughs> you know but this is this is the real world it's the real things and we've got real answers and you know the answer that you know we found to you know this dilemma called complacency in Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. And we're going to break out and we're going to bust loose in 2012, yeah. January 21st, Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, Here we come, yeah, huh? Here we come. <laughs> this is the first of many and uh, we are completely sold out to this thing and just yeah. are believing for wonderful life-changing experience. I'm excited. I'm going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm going to be there, you know, because that, that when you get in an environment, I w I've always said that when you get in an environment where it's conducive for learning and networking, there's no losing yeah. there. There's no yeah. failing there. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to ask you is why do you think people should watch the Leadership Network? Um, I think that people should watch the Leadership Network because they're leaders. I think that People who want to be better leaders should watch this. 
um, there are there are concepts and principles that are communicated on a day-to-day -day basis and if you don't grasp it and if you don't grab a hold to it and adopt it as your own then you'll remain the same mm -hmm. I think that what you're doing is fabulous and you're you haven't begun to scratch the, the tip of the surface of where you. you're headed. I think that this is a wonderful thing that is the momentum. I mean, you can sense the momentum, you know, coming behind you. And, and when, you, when people actually grab a hold of this thing, it'll make people better. And anytime you're doing things that enable people to become better, the only thing that can happen to you is for you to become better. That's right. And Kelly, with your life coach experience, that, yeah, that like I want I want you to draw that life coach out and, and and tell me why do you think people would like what should watch the leadership network? Because we're always we're you never get to a point where you know everything. You right. always are uh, learning more, mm -hmm. uh, experiencing more, and I think the more we interact with one another, yeah. uh, we better one another because there are things that the way you look at things, or I look at our relationship, he looks at things one way and sometimes I see things a different way, but because of that we're able to learn. And then you make rela uh, connections and we help one another. You may need to go here and, and I have the ability to take you there or to give you that, that roadmap to get there, so we're working together. All the time people are going to conferences to, you know, going to this type of conference because they want this. I'm going to this type of place to want this. Well, leaders need a place they can go mm -hmm. so that they can get information and make connections and relationships that will help us all grow and fulfill the mission that we have in life. Let me say this. There's a, there's a story about a doctor who had lost his license to practice and, and he moved to county. He said, I'm going to become a lumberjack. So he moves to county and he becomes a lumberjack. And the first day on the job, he cuts down 25 trees. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Stick a pen. Stick a pen. Got it. He cut cut down 25 trees. Sound like he said cussed out. No, 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 no. He cut down. He cut down 25 trees. I just want to make sure I clarify that. He cut down 25 trees. Chopped down 25 trees. Chopped down 25 trees. He goes into the diner and he's sitting there with his flapjacks. And the exhaust, he says. And the waitress says, how'd you do that? He said, well, I chopped down 25 trees. She said, really? She said, wow, the record is 27. He said, really? I'm just only two away from the record. I'm a new guy. This is my first day. She's like, yeah. So the next day, he says, well, shoot, I almost broke the record. So he works really hard. And at the end of the day, he chopped down 24 trees. So he goes into the diner. She said, what's wrong? He said, I want to chop down 24 trees. But tomorrow, I'm really going really gonna to get to it. So the next day, he goes and I'm gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead a half an hour early and work through lunch and work a half an hour late. Right. He does that. End of the day, tree count is 23. And he goes to the diner and he says, "Man, I don't understand it. I work. I got in a half an hour early. I worked through lunch and I worked a half an hour late, and I only cut 23." She said, "Yes, we are, but you forgot to sharpen your axe." Mm -hmm. Wow. And that's what the leadership network does. Mm -hmm. It allows people to sharpen their axe continually. So that they're as sharp and as crisp on day 77 as they were on day one. Mm, mm, mm. And that will make the difference. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. I thank the Perrys. Y'all watch out because they got something in store for you. You go down to the Breaking Out and Busting Loose down in South Carolina. And I, I encourage you all to read God's Businessman because I really think that's in, it's insightful. This book, I actually haven't read the whole book yet, but hopefully this is a gift for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I would follow us on Twitter, GBiz1. That's right, that's right. And so, GBizMan1. Right, all right. Uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, yeah. God's Businessman, um, God'sBusinessman.com. That's right. And then for more information about the Carolina t uh, Shark Tank, go to TerraceRiley.com. TerraceRiley. That's right. Dot com. That's right. That's my sweetie. That's right. His sister there. As always, be encouraged, be thankful. God bless you. And remember, you are a leader.